Hello everyone. Today I'm here to show you guys how to fix your Toshiba laptop. And the model number on this one is uh, Satellite L655. So what's the common thing that goes wrong with this one? It's that you power it on, all the lights goes on, and the fan starts spinning, but you don't see any image on the screen. So I was saying, so the fault it comes from the GPU overheating. So I do not recommend you guys to put any gaming or any, uh, let's say, graphical interface, let's say Maya or any gaming programs because for it will run it, but it will not last long. So I would recommend you guys buy an Alienware or a PC desktop, so they have enough pipes. Heat sink on them. So, for example, these are one of the old Radon PCI Express for a PC. As you can see, for one GPU that is on the other side, they have a huge pipes and heat sinks and a big, huge fan to cool down the one GPU. Now we're gonna open this and we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how's the inside and how you can take it apart and how can you fix it. All right. To start off, remove the battery. Right, now that we remove the battery, you want to remove the hard drive cover and the RAM cover. So remove the hard drive cover by removing two screws. And then just Grab it open and then remove the three screws that hold in the RAM cover. There you go. Next, we're gonna unscrew the hard drive, the caddy, and then pull the hard drive to your right towards the CD ROM. And then just grab it off. That's your hard drive. And if you want to replace you how you can replace it, just make sure that you remove the caddy by removing two screws and place it on the new hard drive so you can actually lock it down in the place. Alright, next we're gonna remove the RAM. For the removing RAMs, let me put this on a bad lightning here. To remove the RAM, just grab those clips on the side of it, just pull, and the RAM just gonna pop open. And then pull them out in 45 degree angle. Same for the last one. Next, you wanna unplug the Wi Fi cable and remove the cable from the plastic rails. You wanna start unhooking the power jack cable. From the board, just pull out the jack. Well, you don't need to remove the Wi Fi. Next, you want to remove the screw that's right under the cover, right there. That's the CD ROM screw. Remove that up, and then don't yank out on the DVD ROM in the corner. Just put your screw in the side and just pull towards the CD ROM, the metal sheet. And it's just gonna pull the video on. That's the piece right there that we pushed. All right, now that we took most of them out, now we're gonna unscrew all the screws that we see on the top and including the two screws under the DVD ROM. This one has only one, the one is missing. So we're gonna start unscrewing from one side. Alright guys, we removed all the screw except only one that it doesn't want to come out. So I think it has a broken base. So at this point we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna remove the 
this plastic part right on top of the keyboard first you flat the screwdriver between the keys 11 and 12 and they just left it pull up and just gonna pop open and I'll put that to a side now we're gonna remove one one two three four screws that hold in the keyboard Once you remove the screws, pull it from the middle up, the keyboard, put your hand under it and pull it up. So you give this kind of curvature on the keyboard so you can actually un unhook the locks on the side. There we go. Now flip it over and then unhook the ribbon cable by lifting up the plastic cover. Now we're going to unhook the ribbon cable for the mouse pad. Unhook the ribbon cable for the on off switch. Unhook the speakers. You're going to remove all the screws that we see on the black cover. just I can't pull out because there's a remember there was a broken screw down there so I wouldn't let me remove it so I gotta pull it to a side and try to unhook it there we go yeah as I thought Now you can remove the top cover out and on the bottom you can replace the speakers if you want to replace the mouse pad, the button so there is that and there is a broken screw that was holding it so we're gonna hold it with the pliers and then unscrew it then you have up here you on off switch you can just replace it if you want it just glued in there we can with a screwdriver you can put it underneath and just lift it if you want to I'm not gonna do it now about the ribbon cable for the flex cable for the screen you don't want to yank out the cable grab it from like you don't pull the cable you want to put your fingernails on each side of the cable on the each side of the bracket here on the bottom side and then Pull it towards yourself, and that's it. That way, you don't damage the cabling. Next, you want to remove the extra USB ports in here by removing the flex cable right there. You want to want to start removing the this plastic protector. Put it to a side. You're gonna need that at the end. You wanna unscrew pretty much only one screw on the top and one in the middle and that's about it. Now you can actually lift the motherboard from this side and pull out. Now down here you got your power jack. If you wanna replace your power jack, just pop it up, open and then it just comes out. You can replace your power jack if you want to just run the cable is right there you have a bad faulty power jack and if you remove the three screws down here you can remove the screen and the hinges come out again two screws are holding this port which is the usb port right there all right so here we have the motherboard let's put the cover down Flip it over so I don't see the shiny thing. Now this motherboard, as you can see, there's a, the GPU is not installed on this model. So we have the TCH port and the CPU and the GPU right underneath that. 
So next thing we, we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the fan and we're gonna unscrew the four screws down here. There's one, two, three. All right, now you're gonna slowly lift up the process, the heatsink. All right, there we have it. There's your CPU and there's your GPU. So if you are watching this at home, if you want to do a, do it yourself at home, so keep watching with this what I'm going to show you guys how to do it at home. Pretty much what you want to do, you want to clean your heat sink. On this heat sink, I added a copper stream, which helps down to pull down the GPU better and then I put a thermal paste on both ends because the copper absorbs the heat faster than this shitty metal and then passes through the copper tubing because for the CPU they did put a copper belt directly to the uh, tubing but for the GPU for they did not do that that's a uh, in purpose purposely they did this pretty much that's for the so the life is palm of the laptop Degrade. So that's why I'm gonna put in the link in the, in the description the link for where you can buy those stream that really helpful to put one of these on top of your GPUs and put a thermal paste on both ends. So now we're gonna remove the CPU just by grabbing a flat screwdriver, put it there and just twist it 180 degrees and then you hit the click. And then you can just lift up the CPU, try not to drop it or bend the pins on the bottom. Now you have the CPU to a side. What you want to do, you want to cover the four sides of the GPU using an aluminum tape. I'll leave in the description the link where you can buy this aluminum link is a thick one. You don't use a skinny one or the thin ones, they don't work. As good as this one, they don't isolate the heat. So cut four of the two or three inch length, two, three. Doesn't have to be the same size, just be as much as you want to save up to cut a little bit. But if you're fixing your laptop, doesn't matter. All right, before you apply the aluminum duct tape on the board, you can do it. There's nothing wrong if you haven't removed the battery for the BIOS. But I recommend you guys remove the battery for the BIOS. Just put your flat screwdriver on the bottom, just lift it open, and it comes out. And then once you turn on the laptop, you have to set the date and time again. Now, we're going to grab this tape, duct tape, aluminum duct tape, whatever you call this, aluminum tape. You're going to put it about a half a centimeter away from the chip. And we're going to place it on the board, just like that. Overlaying each other. Run your fingers, make sure it's really nice. To be tightly stuck to the board and you're gonna do it to the other end and the most important part make sure you don't put the this aluminum tape over the socket of the CPU otherwise you're gonna mess up the holes on the CPU and uh, you're gonna have a big big problem Try not to go over the socket, just put it there. Before you go over the socket, put a, one of these things that you took it from the back, put it on top, so you're covering the holes, and then put it right there. Hold on, I'll be back. Now we tape it up, we put the last tape, just make sure you cover the holes on the CPU, 
Так. Алюминиум тейп. Ванью сфинир мейсти. Томби скейю на гана парна нити. Шорт на десеркле. Been doing this for a long time. I haven't killed a single board. I have a killed a board, but not this way. <laughs> for getting it on a station. I'm taking a pass, come back and then shorten the board. Anyway, let's clean the chip, you gotta clean it up. You remove the thermal paste from the board. Now that it's clean, you're gonna apply cloth right on top of the chip to protect the PVC. You just apply a little bit of the stock around it, a little bit on top. Box prop to spread the heat so it doesn't accumulate in one place. You don't put too much, just put the I just put a little bit in the middle, like on the on the glass, and like a little bit on the side, it's just gonna go around it. Make sure you don't get it underneath because underneath you're gonna apply a different type of flux. You can do this without the flux, but a flux is, it helps a lot. You can do it without the flux, all this process, but I just put the flux to last longer. So the flux helps to melt the Soldering a little faster, so I don't have to be there for five minutes. So inject some flux, liquid flux, under the chip. That's a liquid flux. I'll leave in the description where you can try this too. I'll leave everything in the description. Even the camera that I use. Oops. All right. Now that we got that there, we're gonna apply heat over the chip for about, if you're using a hair gun, put on a max heat, medium air for about five minutes. Keep it about one inch away from the chip. Five minutes, one inch away from the chip, hair dryer, keep it there for one, five, four or five minutes. If you're using a heat gun, put it to 320 degrees, 320 degrees Celsius, about half an inch away and a circular motion you can just move it around. All right, this is a, just a quick fix. And the permanent fix is to remove the chip and replace the chip with a new chip. And you can buy your new chip off eBay or Amazon. They come pre-soldered on the bottom. You remove this one and you just heat up and put this one right over it. But in this case, the chip is okay. The only problem is the soldering bolt underneath the chip. So we're gonna heat it up and I'll be back. I'm gonna show you how to heat it up. So I put my heat heat station on 300 Celsius and I'll keep it about one or two centimeters away from the chip in a circular motion. Clockwise or counterclockwise, I start heating up for about a minute or two. If you're using a hair dryer, keep the hair dryer on max for about three to four inches away for five minutes. Make sure you don't stay in one place, you start moving around for a minute. All right, now we're gonna wait a few, few seconds. Yeah, what? A minute, a few seconds. 
Wait a minute, let it cool down just by itself in the room ambient. Once it's cooled down, we're gonna remove the papers. All this you can start removing it slowly if they come out. Don't pull, you don't want to bend the board for no reason. Yeah, for you guys, I recommend to wait. I just don't like waiting too much. We're well, taking this one's while it's hot, it's easy. And while it, when it cools down, it's really pain in the ass to remove this aluminium sheets. I'm just gonna let it sit down here for a few minutes. For about a minute. And it's touchable, but it's hot. And meanwhile, let's put this to the side. Let's go ahead and clean the heat sink. I recommend you guys buy these towels. These are mechanical towels. They are very durable and pretty clean. And they last a long time. Grab a piece, apply the alcohol. And then In the CPU, the GPU trim. I don't know if you want to clean the other side, it doesn't matter. I just clean it with the thermal paste. I'm gonna reapply the thermal paste here. To clean the CPU, you can go ahead and take advantage of the time and clean the CPU. Just the crystal, you don't need to go clean the whole CPU. Just the crystal, and that's it. So I'm gonna put this in on its place. Alright, I think the board it should be cooled down now. Yep, it's cool. Now you're gonna grab your CPU, you're gonna see a triangle. And here you're gonna be a triangle in the corner of the, the CPU socket. You have to match the triangle in here. You put it in. Grab your flat screwdriver, flip it 180 degrees towards the GPU. Grab your ROM chip and battery. Face down, put it in. Now we gotta clean the CPU and the GPU again. Just run. Alright. Now you're gonna grab your thermal paste. I recommend you guys to buy a Arctic Silver Pipe. We are one of the best thermal paste. Apply it there. And you do wanna apply right in between these two, where the blank spot is. Apply there, enough thermal paste. The copper frame on top. I got to one place on this side. I hate the CPU. Alright. Now, what you're gonna do, you're gonna close it up. You can clean the uh, heat sink. I already cleaned it, it's clean. Put the heat sink back on. Put the screws. And once the screws are in, plug in the fan. You wanna 
grab one of the rams plugging one of the ram in at the bottom 45 degree angle push down and put the board to a side flip open and now you want to grab the board watch for this cable to open Watch for the flex cable for the on off switch. Put it in place. Run the cable for the LCD. Push the cable in, but make sure you grab the cable from the sides and then push it in. Don't push from the cable, you're gonna damage the cable. Just plug in the on off switch, you don't need to plug in anything else on the top part. While you do that, just put one screw in the middle. Two hold. <laughs> I must grab. To hold the board. Now you want to flip it over. And you want to plug in the power jack. You don't need to plug in anything. Yeah, make sure these cables are away. They're not on the board, so they're not touching. And we're going to test it out. What we're going to do, we're going to grab. The charger and grab the charger and plug in the charger. I see the power light on in here. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm spinning. Wait a few seconds and there we go. Toshiba. I'm gonna tell you there's no boot shit going on. Remember how detected this CMOS battery failure. So that's trying to tell you press F1 to set the battery eight and time. And pretty much that's it. Now uh, let's put it back together. So unplug it, don't worry, there's no hard drive. You can turn it on and off as much as you want, as long as you don't have the hard drive plugged in. So what you want to do, continue plugging the ribbon cable for the USB hub. Put in the screw for the board right on top. And this screw does not go there, it goes right here. Now you want to make sure you put the plastic cover on top, otherwise, you're going to shorten the board. Not always, sometimes you shorten the board. And there you go. It you should run this cable over this, so unplug it, put it over. Nothing happens if you go under. It's just gonna show up on the other side under the hard drive. Once we have this, you wanna grab the top cover. Put the top cover directly right over. Snap the corner, the front. Make sure it snaps in. Yeah, basically just now plug in the okay grab your tweezers and go find no it's already connected the power cable connect the speakers the mouse pad try not to bend the flex cables they're really delicate now we're gonna plug in all the screws on the top If you guys have any questions about this repair, you can ask me in the comment, and I'll try to answer as much as I can. I'll put the link for every part that you'll be needing and the tools that I use. Most of the tools, not all the tools. Alright, now that we put all the screws, I'm gonna grab the hard then the keyboard. Put the keyboard in place, just the way it's supposed to be. Flip over. All right. You put the keyboard on uh, its face, from it's the way it's supposed to be. And then you pull it over. Grab the ribbon cable. Run your fingers over. Make sure it's clean. There's no dust. I just slide it underneath. 
the lock, just put the plastic down. The plastic is down left, then put it down. And now you can flip over, put the bottom side first. Push the side, flat the metal so you have this curvature, and then put the side. And you're gonna put all the three screws on the top part. All right there. 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 And the last one. Next, you wanna put the this cover. Put the side and side first. The side doesn't want to go in, start from that side and then put this side. And then just push it in, it will just snap in its place. Once that's done, maybe somebody try to hit this side, it's kind of wrinkled up. I don't know what they did. Right. You get lots of surprises in this line of work. Alright, now I run the cable for Wi Fi. Plug in the Wi Fi antennas. Plug in the last round, 45 degree angle in. Push down. Make sure it's in. Push down. Take the hard drive. Actually, let's put this at the end. Let's put the three, four screws at the, under the battery. Those are the flat screws. Put a small screw right by the battery. And then put the four corners first. Always to the corners. And one in the middle. And now you can start going around. Put the ones that you haven't put. This one is fucked up, so I'll put the one beside it. And this one right here. And then Put the one under the. Actually, um, doesn't matter because it's kind of broken, so it doesn't it won't hold. Grab the CD ROM, slide it in. Put the screw for the CD ROM. Put the power for the RAM and Wi-Fi power. Map the corners. Now, before you put the hard drive in and turn it on, do last final check. Make sure you get power. Grab your power cord. And there's a power light going on. There's a power light right there. Now we're gonna turn it on. We got light. And there. Let's see what it says. F1 to continue. As well as there is no boot section, insert the boot disk. Control Alt Delete and F2. Keep pressing F2 until you go to the setup. Now you can set the time and day. And then shut it down. I did not put the time and date, I know. No. You're gonna put the hard drive in. Remember that last screw that was under the underneath there? I'm gonna put one there. I'll put the screw for this one. And the screw right there. One last screw for that one order. Let's make sure that 
Grab the cover, put the cover in, and that's it. I hope you guys like this video. If you liked it, I mean, up to you guys, thumbs up, and please think about subscribing. It really helps me out to make more videos and take your requests. Thanks for watching, guys. And this is how you fix your Toshiba laptop. Ready to call the customer.